we do make creatine. We make about, I don't know, our liver makes about one to three grams a day of creatine. And our brain also makes creatine. And those are the two organs that make it. Creatine gets consumed by other tissues, like the muscle is probably the one that's the greediest because creatine is stored as phosphocreatine, but it's used to make energy, essentially. You've heard creatine builds muscle, but what if I told you it also builds a sharper brain? Anti-aging expert, Dr. Rhonda Patrick, now takes 20 grams a day, not for strength gains, but for mental performance, recovery, and even protection against stress and sleep deprivation. The research behind this is jaw-dropping. If you've never taken 20 grams of creatine, this might completely change how you think about health and aging, why creatine was always misunderstood. For years, creatine had a reputation problem. It was labeled as a gym bro supplement, Creatine has been around for, I mean, ever, for decades. And it's always been, in my mind, it was like one of those gym bro things. Something only bodybuilders use to bulk up and look swole. People thought it caused bloating, water retention, and even hair loss. And because of that, most people, especially women, older adults, and those outside the fitness world, stayed far away from it. But here's the truth. Creatine is not some artificial steroid or dangerous shortcut. It's a natural compound your body already produces, mainly in the liver and brain. We do make creatine. We make about, I don't know, our liver makes about one to three grams a day of creatine. And our brain also makes creatine. And those are the two organs that make it and it's essential for energy production in your cells. What most people never realized is this. Creatine isn't just a muscle supplement. It's a mitochondrial supplement, and that means it affects your brain, energy levels, memory, focus, and even resilience under stress. The effects of creatine on the brain start to really get my interest. Anything that affects the brain, I really become interested in. Today, leading researchers like Dr. Rhonda Patrick and others are rewriting the creatine story entirely. And once you see what it really does, you'll understand why 20 grams a day isn't as crazy as it sounds. What happens at five grams versus 20 grams? Most people who supplement with creatine stick to the standard five grams per day and for good reason. And I was doing about five grams a day because that was really what was shown to, to be beneficial for muscle health in combination with resistance training. That's the amount shown to saturate your muscles over time, helping with strength, performance, and recovery. But here's what almost no one talks about. Your muscles aren't the only ones using creatine. Your brain is a massive energy consumer, and it also makes and uses creatine. The problem? If you're only taking five grams, your muscles will greedily absorb most of it, leaving little left for your brain. That's why researchers started exploring higher doses, 10, 15, even 20. 20 grams to see what would happen when the brain gets enough. One study from Germany found that 10 grams per day significantly increased creatine levels in multiple regions of the brain. And so they, what this German study found was that 10 grams of creatine increased creatine levels in several different regions of the brain. And that was probably the most exciting. But only after the muscles were already saturated. This is the turning point. Once your muscles have enough, the extra creatine can finally reach your brain. And that's when the real cognitive benefits begin to show. So while five grams supports your body, 20 grams may be what your brain actually needs, especially if you're under chronic stress, working long hours, or not sleeping enough. That's the hidden truth behind creatine dosing. It's not just about building muscle. It's about building resilience, physically and mentally, the 20 gram effect on the brain. So what happens when you take 20 grams of creatine? According to emerging research and firsthand experiences from experts like Dr. Rhonda Patrick, something remarkable begins to happen, not in your biceps, but in your brain. In one study, participants were sleep deprived for 21 hours, then given 20 to 30 grams of creatine. The results? Their cognitive performance didn't just recover, it improved beyond baseline. They performed better than people who had full sleep. Why? Because creatine helps the brain recycle and regenerate energy fast. When you're under cognitive stress, your brain's demand for ATP skyrockets. Creatine steps in to restore that energy balance, which means better focus, quicker thinking, and less mental fatigue. People who've tried higher doses report things like no more afternoon crashes, increased mental clarity, less brain fog, and better memory recall. And get this, some even say they feel like they need less sleep because their brain recovers faster. For Dr. Rhonda Patrick, the switch to 10 to 20 grams daily wasn't about muscle muscle gains. It was about high-level cognitive performance, long podcast days, deep research, complex problem solving. That's when she noticed a difference, clearer thinking, faster recovery, more energy. And if you're someone who's constantly pushing your brain to its limits, whether you're a student, creator, CEO, or just someone juggling a lot, 20 grams of creatine might be your secret edge. And 
in those situations, I go up from my 10 grams to more like 20 grams. Like today, for example, I wasn't really sleep deprived, but you know, there's a lot of high cognitive demand. This is a long podcast. There's all that stuff. And so I went up to 20 grams today on my creatine. Who should consider higher doses? Now you might be wondering, do I really need 20 grams of creatine? The answer depends on what you're asking your brain and body to do. If you're just casually active and getting good sleep, five grams may be enough. But for certain people, higher doses can be a game changer and not for muscles, but for mental performance, recovery, and brain resilience. High performers and knowledge workers. If your days are filled with problem solving, learning, writing, or intense focus, your brain is under constant stress. Creatine can help you stay sharp even when you're running on less rest. Sleep deprived professionals or parents. One of the most surprising findings creatine can offset the effects of sleep deprivation. That makes it incredibly useful for anyone burning the candle at both ends. Vegans and vegetarians, and creatine is found almost exclusively in meat and fish. If you don't eat animal products, your brain may be running below optimal creatine levels and you don't even know it. Older adults and aging brains. As we age, natural creatine production slows. Higher doses may help preserve memory, mental energy, and even muscle function, which is vital for independence and longevity. People under chronic stress or depression. Mental health conditions drain your brain's energy reserves. Early research shows creatine may support emotional emotional regulation, cognitive stability, and even enhanced therapy results. So if you're one of these people or just someone who wants to feel better, think faster, and age stronger, a higher creatine dose might not just help. It might completely change the way your brain performs. Common myths busted. At this point, you might be thinking, okay, creatine sounds promising, but isn't it risky? Let's break down the biggest myths because most of them are just flat out wrong. Myth number one, creatine causes bloating and water retention. Yes, creatine does pull water into your muscles, but that's actually a good thing. It hydrates your cells and improves performance. You might gain a pound or two of water weight, but it's not bloat in the way people fear. And visually, you're more likely to look fuller and stronger, not puffier. Myth number two, creatine causes hair loss. This one comes from a single study from 2009 that showed an increase in DHT, a hormone linked to hair thinning in rugby players, taking 25 grams per day. But here's the catch. The study didn't measure hair loss at all. It's never been replicated, even after 15 plus years. A 2025 randomized controlled trial found no hair loss or DHT spike in men taking 5 grams per day for 12 weeks. Bottom line, there's no solid evidence that creatine causes hair loss, period. Myth number three, creatine is a steroid or unsafe. Creatine is not a steroid. It's a naturally occurring compound found in meat, fish, and even produced by your own liver. Over 1,000 plus studies confirm its safety, effectiveness, and long-term benefits for both men and women, young and old. Myth number four, it's only for young guys trying to bulk up. That's old thinking. Today, creatine is being used by scientists, doctors, women, seniors, vegans, and cognitive performers around the world. Because the new science is clear, it's not just a fitness supplement, it's a total body and brain supplement. Don't let myths hold you back from something that could truly help you think better, recover faster, and age stronger. How to take creatine safely. Okay, so you're convinced creatine isn't just for bodybuilders. But how do you take it safely? Let's break it down. What type should you use? Stick with creatine monohydrate. It's the most researched, safe and most effective form, no need for fancy blends or overpriced variations. Look for one that's micronized for better mixability. Dosage strategy. Option one, the fast track loading phase. Take 20 grams per day for five to seven days, split into four doses of five grams, then drop to five grams per day as a maintenance dose. This saturates your muscle stores faster and gets results sooner. Option two, the steady approach. Take five grams per day consistently. You'll reach full saturation in about three to four weeks. Perfect if you're not in a rush or prefer to avoid temporary water weight. Brain optimization approach. Take 10 to 20 grams per day if you're aiming for cognitive effects. Best after muscles are already saturated or split into two daily doses. Dr. Rhonda Patrick uses this method. 10 grams daily and up to 20 grams on high demand days. Hydration matters. Creatine pulls water into your cells. So if you're taking it, stay hydrated, especially if you're using higher doses. When to take it. 
Creatine is not timing sensitive. You can take it before or after your workout in the morning with breakfast or even split into two doses during mentally intense days. Some evidence suggests taking it with a carb or protein meal may improve absorption. How long should you use it? Creatine isn't a quick hack. It works best over time. Consistency is key. Many experts, including those studying aging and neuroprotection, recommend it as a long-term supplement, especially as we age. So whether you're training your body, your brain, or both creatine is safe, simple, and science-backed. You just need to use it the right way. Creatine isn't just for athletes. It's not just for young men trying to get bigger biceps. It's for your brain, your energy, your focus, and your future. Experts like Dr. Rhonda Patrick are using it daily not to bulk up, but to think clearer, age slower, and recover faster. And studies are now showing that at 10 to 20 grams per day, creatine doesn't just support muscle, it supercharges your mind, especially during stress, sleep loss, or intense cognitive demand. So if you've never taken 20 grams of creatine before, maybe it's time to stop thinking of it as a gym supplement and start seeing it for what it really is. A brain fuel, a resilience tool, and possibly one of the most underestimated longevity supplements of our time. If this video changed the way you think about creatine, hit the like button so more people can discover this. For more videos on science-based health, aging, and performance, subscribe to you in the next